Miss Allie, I said yes. this to you off camera. I'm going to say it again on camera. I didn't think I could love you more Aww. after Legally Blonde and Obsessed, but you have done it, honey. Thank you. You have done it yet again. Thank you. Oh, my God. And you don't age. What are you doing? That is not true. You're so Girl, sweet. We you have look... gorgeous lighting. No, gorgeous Diva. Lighting. You are like the Benjamin Buttons. <laughs> <laughs> you I are mean, like the Benjamin Buttons of, of this you series. You are so sweet. You know what? I mean, kind of, though, because there's moments where, you know, she is so put together and and fabulous hair and makeup and the jeans and all that, but you also see Angela with no makeup on falling apart, and those are not very glamorous scenes. And I think that as an actor, that is that's what I want to play. You know, you want all sides of the rainbow. You don't want to just show some one dimensional side. So I'm not scared of looking bad on camera or really showing that because you get to show just a vulnerable side, you know, within her. I love how you doing a humble brag, Allie, but you look pretty and gorgeous regardless <laughs> of whether you got a face on or not. We're not Thank even going to go there. Thank like, you. really? I can't. So I, let's I, talk I, about I that Boomtown that. podcast. Did you listen to this to prepare for your character? Of course. So Christian Wallace, you know, his family grew up in the Permian Basin, mm -hmm. which is Midland, Odessa, mm -hmm. in West Texas. And so he did this extraordinary podcast, which was an eye into the real world of oil. And then you have Taylor Sheridan, who also grew up in Texas, but, you know, really comes within knowing, like, how to create these dynamic characters and amazing storylines. And the two of them together were like this magic potion um, to really be able to tell this story. And so I think that, you know, Christian brings an authentic authenticity to this that you can feel on this show. And Taylor brings these incredibly colorful characters that, you know, make it kind of immensely watchable. Getting to deep dive a little bit about the oil industry and and learning a little bit about how dangerous it is. Mm -hmm. And and also reading the the scripts, it's a dirty industry. And so getting to getting to dive into that and, and yeah, being able to play these amazing women. The women in the show are just amazing and, and they're the backbone. <laughs> I would say. Yeah, yeah I I uh, had the Boomtown podcast mm -hmm. on the plane to Texas for my audition. Yeah. I made sure I mm -hmm. listened to it because he, he goes through each episode has its own topic of a different mm -hmm. aspect of this lifestyle in the Permian Basin. Mm -hmm. So Boomtown is an amazing listen and very yes. educational, yes. very helpful. And yeah, it helped build these characters, yes. these, uh, you, you learned sort of the, the ways of the world mm -hmm. through that podcast and then it Definitely. helped you create your character. Yeah, how, how, did you, how did listening to that prepare you for jumping into this world? Because for me, this world kind of feels like, and, and bear with me, it kind of feels like The Godfather meets Dallas meets that. Yellowstone. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a great, that's that's a great good note. I love that. That's true. <laughs> I, I listened to it uh, when, when Taylor reached out to me, oh, goodness, three or four years ago and said, uh, you know, I'm doing this show based on this podcast. So I immediately got on my iPhone that's made by petroleum mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and, 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 and plugged in the thing and put in my ear pods that are made out of petroleum, petroleum. <laughs> and listened to this podcast. And the first thing I thought is, Two episodes in, you know, I thought, oh gosh, how, are he, how is he going to transfer this story that's in your head, the oral audio story, this podcast, to something dramatic on the screen? That was the biggest thing. And then I read the pilot in the second episode, and I could have put it down, and Taylor did it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the biggest thing for me, is this crazy, wild, amazing world out there in West mm -hmm. Texas. Uh, how are we going to put that on screen? That's, that was my biggest mm -hmm. Yeah. I listened to the podcast, and what was amazing was how I got sucked into that thing and the people that he that he talked about and the people that are on there. They sound like people I know. They sound like people in this show, you know. And I'm thinking, that's where that came from. That's where that came from, you know. Yeah. Now I see, what, I see where Taylor brought those stories to life. I listened to it. Uh, we were already there for pre-production. I think I listened to it in, like, January or something. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as helping with the character and getting the feel, I think it gave a huge sense listening to these people who lived it in real life every day. Yeah. I think it gave a real sense of their emotion and the pride that they had behind it and really what goes into the job. So it, it did really help on preparing for that sense of going into this character. Listen, though, but you made Angela very multifaceted. Like, that's yeah. a character that easily could have been 
she could have gone really wrong really quickly. Yes. But you made her multi layered and multi faceted. She's Thank funny. You. She's hard. She's Thank empathetic. You. She's sympathetic. My Thank favorite you. scene of all is when you had the family dinner. You went through all that drama and had a family dinner. The bon Baby and folk carried on, and you were not having any. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, I mean, that probably one of the hardest scenes I've ever done in my life. It was like eight minutes long. We shot it all in one. Take. You never get to do that, you know? It was just unbelievable. And then to be able to, you know, sit and have the family dynamic when you see everybody together. And, you know, this is her trait. Like, her making the most beautiful dinner is how she's trying to put her family back together. And she puts so much pressure on herself for it to be perfect. And when it all kind of implodes and then people don't see it and you see her <laughs> break down, um, you know, it was just, it was real. And, like, that was amazing that, you know, I get to have all these different layers in her. And, and you don't always get that. So I, I thank you so much for saying that. And I really feel like it's in Taylor's writing. And then for me, it was just essential to always find the humor, find the love, find that, you know, for her. But you know, there was this one episode that you had where you let, I, I'm not, I can't remember who he is, but I'm not sure if he's your boyfriend or your ex-husband or who he is, <laughs> but he came to the lawn and oh, drew yeah. a gun on uh, Jacob's character. Mm -hmm. And you let him have it. And then yes. not only did you let him have it, but you were like, and watch this. I <laughs> loved you for that. I oh my was gosh. so invested in that moment. It was so great. I auditioned with that scene. Did you? And so I, as soon as I read it, I was like, Ariana, <laughs> we love you. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, getting to do that scene, I'm so fun. You're in a world where misogyny is rampant. Mm -hmm. How do you feel being two women in the Hollywood zeitgeist where misogyny is rampant? And how do you how do you cope with that or how do you sweep it under the rug so that you can go ahead and do your do your thing? I think you just, you have to know your boundaries mm -hmm. and and make sure that you ex you express them and know that something that's asked of you no means no. Yes. So it's really sticking to your own boundaries mm -hmm. and morals yeah but no I agree I I've learned to become very vocal um, about things that I'm passionate about and and call people in and to just talk about it especially being in the Latino community um, just knowing your worth and knowing that you deserve to be in the room that you are in with the people that you are in um, impos imposter syndrome is is a really big thing for me, but it's it's just like I'm, I earned to be here and and I belong here. Since I know you come from country music, mm -hmm. did you contribute any music to this season? Everything inspires me, you know. Conversations, whatever. This script inspired me, so I called Billy. And I go, hey, what about this idea? And he said, I like that idea. So he and I have written a couple things that will probably be. A part of this show, and I'm that's excited. news to me. That's <laughs> great. Oh, awesome. I got an exclusive. Hey. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, I'm really yeah, excited. You set up a yeah, YouTube. Well, like, oh, that's news to me. You got a Mark Colley song? Well, maybe. Uh, I, I'm not singing it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, but but uh, I, I don't want to get out of it. I got to be the sheriff. You know? Yeah, that's right. But uh, <laughs> we got a Billy and I wrote a song with a band called uh, uh, Flatland Calvary. It's going to record, and it's called Midland After Midnight. That's the first song that he and I talked about, and uh, it's the first song we wrote, thinking about this song, this story. And I don't know uh, how it'll do, you know, but uh, you never know. It might be looking for love in all the wrong places. You Ooh, know? Okay, well, I can expound <laughs> upon right. that. Which, which would be perfect, you <laughs> yeah. know. It'd be Johnny Lee hit. But anyway, thank you for asking that. But, yeah. you know, I can't help but write songs. I write songs all day. It's all I do, you know. The writing is spectacular on the show, yeah. but it takes an artist to bring it to life. Mm. And you brought Thank it you. to life spectacularly. You Thank really, you so really did. Much. It was so Thank you. much my pleasure to watch you in the Thank show. You, you were so much. You're Girl, so you were sweet. Thank let's, you. let's get a season two. Woo, let's go. I agree. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Your mouth to God's ears. Girl. <laughs> let's go. All right. Thank you, Allie. <laughs> thank you so much. Let me tell time. you something. I remember you from Nashville. That was my jam. I just <laughs> well, had to get that you. out. Thank I you. really just had to get that out. Thank you. And Jacob, you my dude. Mm. <laughs> you my dude. You my He's dude. mine, too. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. And you're my dude, too, because you're from Missouri. That's right. I'm from Missouri. No way. Right. I'm from St. Louis. Oh, lovely. Joplin here. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
right? The other corner. Yeah. Okay, right? All the way on the other end. I That's love that. That's right. I love yeah. you. I love y'all. Well, I you. love this show. Thank you so much thank for you. giving me the time to talk to you today. I, I appreciate you. it. Thank you. Yes, All right. Have See a great you. Day. <laughs>